Currently, this is one of the most affordable and most powerful portable power stations for emergency backup power. If you just wanna run some personal gear while you're camping or overlanding or just anywhere off grid. This is the C1000 Gen 2 from Anchor Solux. Surprisingly enough, in a unit this small, you have a 2000 watt inverter. And I've tested over 50 different aspects of this unit to see if it's really worth getting, especially for the price that it's at right now. My name is Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel, and I've been testing solar generators for almost 10 years now. So Anchor Solux asked me if I would put the C1000 Gen 2 through the ringer to see if it's actually any good. This is my full and honest opinion of the C1000 Gen 2, which has some major differences from the C1000 Gen 1. And I'm gonna get into all of that right here. The one thing that I found a little weird with the inverter is that it does have a 2000 watt inverter, but I could not find anywhere what the peak output is. Basically, when you turn on, say, like a sump pump or a water pump, you have a huge surge of energy that starts up and then it starts running at its continuous rate. So the continuous output of this is 2000 watts, but it can go up to 2400 watts of continuous output if you use their surge pad outlet right here. But in terms of the surge power, I have to assume it's at least 3000 watts, but the customer service didn't know it wasn't in the user manual, so that part was a little weird. You have five AC outlets. These four are rated to 1800 watts and this one's rated to 2400 watts. And I did a drain test on this at full value to see if I could truly get the 2400 watts where I ran a bunch of incandescent light bulbs in a heat gun. And I found this really interesting. While I was at 2000 watts or less, the voltage of the output of the outlets stayed at 120 volts. As soon as I went over the 2000 volt threshold, it would actually drop down to 110 volts and I could see the light bulbs dim a little bit. So it's still perfectly fine to do that, but you are gonna notice a drop in voltage in order to get an increase in amperage. So if you do need to run a heavy load for a little while, this is gonna be able to do it. But I did do a 0.2C discharge test on this to see how efficient the inverter was. So getting 83% out of this is average. At least it's on par with the average on the market. But one thing that most people don't factor is what's called the idle power consumption rate. And that means if I have the inverter turned on right here and this is not running anything, this will consume about 13.6 watt hours for every hour that it's turned on. I did this test a few different times and I got anywhere from 13.6 to 15 watt hours per hour. So that, that's actually really good even for a unit of this size. It does have a UPS function which works in under 10 milliseconds, which means any sensitive electronics are not gonna have a problem staying turned on. And if the grid power goes out and this is already plugged in, once grid power goes off and you're running say a sump pump or refrigerator freezer off of this, it's gonna immediately take over without any hesitation. But one thing that I found really peculiar is that if I'm running less than 2000 watts, whether I'm at 100% or 1%, the voltage output stayed at a steady 120 volts. That's really impressive because it's common that the inverter will lower its voltage in order to put out more power near the low end of the battery state of charge. This didn't do that. It would only drop to 110 volts if it was drawing more than 2000 watts. But one of the most impressive things that I liked the most about the C1000 Gen 2 is how quiet it is. Even at only about 12 to 18 inches away, this was less than 30 decibels. Being at five feet away, I could not get a reading on my decibel meter for this unit. So you can hear the fans, they are there and they are subtle, but if you have to sleep next to this, have it under your bed in a van or a camp or something like that, this is gonna be extremely quiet. I also ran my refrigerator off of this because that's the number one thing people need to run in an emergency. I was able to get 8.3 hours of nonstop runtime off of this, which was a total of 850 watt hours, which ironically also equaled 83% efficiency out of the system. But that was closer to a 0.1 C discharge rate. So that's a very stable efficiency over different discharge speeds. And it's perfectly fine to use the USB ports, which are DC power, as well as the outlets here, the AC power at the same time. You can use all of the outlets all at once. That also includes the car socket here here on the side, which on the Gen 1 version is on the front. Now something that's becoming more popular are high output USB-C ports, and that's what we see here on this unit. There are two USB-C 140 watt ports, and then a USB-C 15 watt port, and then a USB-A 12 watt port. Now the battery is only 1,024 watt hours, which is not a ton of power depending on what you want to run. If you're off flying drones, running a laptop, running a DC fridge, recharging tool batteries, this is gonna work really well for that. But this does not have the option to have an expansion battery. You'll see all the way around, there are no extra battery ports on this. That's not a deal breaker because it's really meant for portable power and essentials only backup. 
But you're still gonna get the lithium iron phosphate with at least 3,500 cycles on this, which means you can easily use this every day for 10 years. And after 10 years of nonstop use, it's still gonna be about 80% efficient compared to how it is brand new. And at only 25 pounds, pretty much anybody can move this thing around. The AC charging port on the side is a typical C13, which means you don't have to have a charging cable with a big adapter brick on it. Its standard charge rate is up to 1200 watts, but it does have a fast charge mode where you can get all the way up to 1800 watts if you have to charge this really, really fast. By doing so, you're going to wear the battery out a little bit faster. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but 1200 watts of charging speed is plenty for a unit of the size, and it is adjustable down from 1200 watts. So one of the cool things about the screen is if you push the power button, you can see your total input, whether it's AC or DC, and then you push this again, and it goes to the third screen where it shows your total output between all of the USB-C, car port. So you don't have to use the app to see everything going on with all of the different ports. And at a size of only 15 inches by 8 inches by 10 inches, Inches. This is very compact, easy to fit in a small compartment. The solar input uses an XT60i connector and it's rated up to 600 watts. But it's very important to remember watts is only the result of multiplying volts and amps. So for clarification, 100 volts at 1 amp is 100 watts. And 10 volts at 10 amps is also 100 watts. And 1 volt at 100 amps is still 100 watts. Now, weirdly enough, this has two charge parameters, even though it only has one solar input. So there's basically what they're calling a low voltage and then a higher voltage, but anything under 60 volts is considered low voltage. So the first range is 11 to 28 volts and 8.2 amps. That's basically the equivalent of one Bougie RV 200 watt bifacial solar panel, which is the panel that I recommend for this system because it will go up to 28.5 volts. But then the next voltage range is 28 to 60 volts, and 14.5 amps. I don't know the exact reason why they make it different, but they have that option in case you're using less panels or more panels. It just seems to make sense to me that if you had either 11 to 60 volts, you could go up to 14.5 amps. Not sure why it's different. The difficulty with using a 60 volt charge controller is that there's basically two or three solar panels on the market, that's it, that will work to allow you to get a maximum of close to 60 volts. Because the higher your voltage, the more efficient the system is. But even if they had just gone to 65 volts or 70 volts, you would be able to use pretty much any 100 watt or 200 watt panel. So I dislike the fact that it has a 60 volt charge controller. This is extremely common across many different units and I dislike it on all of the units. It's not special to just this. I just wish that companies would go at least to 65 volts or even better at 70 volts. That way it's easier to use different 100 watt and 200 watt panels. It does include a car charger and that will get you up to 100 watts of input if you're just on the road and want to trickle charge this. There was no XT60i to MC4 adapter. That makes no sense to me. Fortunately, it's like 15 bucks to go get your own XT60i to MC4 adapter on Amazon. But once again, while I was solar charging this, I was still getting less than 30 decibels of sound coming off of it. It's extremely quiet. You can wall charge and solar charge at the same time. And another interesting thing is that this does have DC input dark start. So if you drain this down to 0% and then the next day solar starts coming in to the side here, this will turn itself back on and start recharging. The exact same feature is built into the Anchor Solux F3800 Plus, which is another Anchor Solux unit that I do like a lot. And as a total side note, my absolute favorite DC fridge is the Everfrost 2 from Anchor Solux. Again, no one's paying me to tell you that. It is my favorite DC fridge though. I absolutely love it. But does any of that matter if it's overpriced? Well, the retail price on this is set to be $799. That's a little hefty. But right now, while this is on sale, you can get it for as low as $429. Now I use a free solar generator comparison chart that I regularly update so that way you guys can see apples to apples comparisons between different units. The C1000 Gen 2 is actually on the left, which generally speaking, left to right, I prefer the units on the left and dislike the units more on the right. Now it's hard to tell in this piece of paper, but let me show you here. This lime green or bright green means that it has an astounding stat and this is by far the cheapest price per whole watt compared to these other top units within its own category. You can see I price it differently than most people. I factor the inverter, battery, and solar because this is a solar generator or a power station which combines all three of those things. If this were just a battery, then I would compare it just based on the battery capacity. I think that's pretty unfair to compare it that way because if you had a really crappy solar input and a really crappy inverter output, but the battery was really good, then it would be skewed. So at $429, this is less than 50 cents per whole watt. That's what I call it with the inverter, battery, and solar all being factored. 
You can see of these other top units, this is by far the cheapest one at this price. If you wanna see how this compares to other systems out there, then definitely take a look at this chart. The main differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 is that this is a more compact and shorter unit. But the, one of the reasons why they got it shorter is because they got rid of this light bar. You also notice that the cigarette lighter port is no longer on the front of the Gen 2. It's now on the side of it. On the Gen 2, we have the car port output here. But here on the Gen 1, we have an expansion battery port. So if you do choose to go with the Gen 1, you can double the battery capacity to over 2000 watt hours. But then it's also important to ask yourself, if you did need to get an expansion battery, would it be worth just getting a bigger unit like the F2000 from Anchor Solix? The wall charger is the same, but you'll see that the solar inputs are different. On the Gen 2, it's using an XT60i, which is rated to a higher amperage than the XT60. And you can tell the difference because the XT60 is yellow and the XT60i is orange. The Gen 1 uses the same screen that's on the F3000, the F3800, the F3800 Plus. This is just Anchor Solix's generic screen. The C1000 Gen 2 has a much more intuitive screen that's a lot easier to read from a distance and just looks cooler. One thing that really surprised me is here I have my EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. These are almost the same size, but they have the exact same size battery inside. The inverter in the Delta 3 Plus is 2200 watts and the C1000 Gen 2 is 2000 watts. So in terms of inverter and battery, they're pretty much the same. Now this has 1000 watts of solar input and this is only 600 watts of solar input. But for a unit of these sizes, do you need 1000 watts of solar? In my opinion, it's great, it's definitely a bonus, but it's not absolute necessity. This basically just has two charge controllers and this one has one. There are two big differences between these two units and that is that this unit is currently only $429, whereas this one is currently $899. So more than double the price. But the other main difference is that this can have expansion batteries and this cannot. So if you do need the ability to get expansion batteries, then it's going to be better to go with something like the Delta 3 Plus. But if you don't think you'll ever need that because this is only meant to be portable, easy power, then this is by far a much better choice in my opinion. That's not to say that this is a bad unit. I just think that for the applications, I would rather take this and save over 50% of the cost because I don't have an expansion battery for this and I'm not going to be using that feature. This has a five year warranty and Anchor Solix is a large company with great customer service. I've called them on multiple occasions and they were very quick to answer my calls and extremely helpful. If they didn't know an answer, they went and talked to someone who could give me the answer. The only thing that really bothered me is they could not give me the peak output for the inverter. The app is very easy to use. So for example, if I wanna turn off the AC output, I push this power button right here. You hear it click and it's almost an immediate response because I have this connected over Wi-Fi. I can leave the screen on for up to 30 minutes. I can choose that the device never times out. I can change how high I want it to charge up and how low I want it to discharge. One feature that's very different with this that you don't get in pretty much any other system is all the different modes. So I use this in standard mode, but you also have a time of use, storm guard, and fast charging plan. So the time of use allows you to program when you want the system to turn on and off. So for example, say this was running a security system at night or running lights at night. You could tell this when to turn on and when to turn off. And then storm guard, if you set it up, it will detect if there is a weather system coming into your area and will prepare itself for an outage. And then of course the fast charging plan just allows you to charge it up really quickly. So this is an extremely quiet system. The app is really easy to use. The 2000 watt output is very strong for a system of this size. The screen is really cool. It's very affordable and the customer service has been great. I do wish it had expansion batteries and it had a easier to work with solar input. I don't know if the price will go all the way up to $7.99 after this presale is done. But if you're looking for a portable system, that's the most affordable for what you get. This is truly it and it's proven on the free solar generator comparison chart compared to other systems of similar size. If you want to pair this with long lasting solar panels that are more affordable than folding solar panels, then check out this video right here and then use these portable solar panel stands that bolt right onto it. And you have a system that will last for years on end being used outside and is less than half the cost of buying a folding solar panel. For any discounts or help that you need, links are in the description down below.